It's springtime in Suffolk. The sun's shining and clay shooters are converging on the lovely surroundings of High Lodge to shoot the CPSA's first major sporting championship of the year, the English Open. <laughs> Edward King is here with the sponsors Rizzini, and he couldn't be happier. Enjoying the sunshine here, a bit of pleasant breeze, very nice targets. Uh, everyone who's come off the course has had a great, great time. Had a lot of positive comments about that. Uh, Rizzini once again uh, and ASI, main sponsors uh, of the competition. Uh, and uh, this year we're very fortunate. We've got Sergio here from the Rizzini factory. There are few people who are as good as he is at actually setting up and fettling the detachable trigger mechanisms and generally servicing these guns. So anyone who happens to have a, a, a Rizzini and who turns up here uh, can have a free service and uh, have their gun looked at. And um, if anything needs doing, then uh, we'll do it for them. Ottimo. Mille grazie, Sergio. Out on the 120 target course, the clays are flying and everyone's in good spirits. The CPSA's Ian Parker says it shows the sport's bouncing back after a difficult couple of years. Yeah, I mean, obviously the pandemic um, affected all of us, you know, across our lives, affected our business, our sport, affected the association for sure. And yes, you know, we've, we've come back from it strong. Um, I think whether you look at the number of people shooting, the number of new people coming into the sport, our memberships bounced back. It did go down for obvious reasons during the pandemic. But no, I think the sport's, you know, coming back in a good way. And you look at the grounds, you know, places you know, like here at High Lodge and the amount of investment uh, that they're putting into to both their grounds and the sport. Uh, I think, you know, the future is bright. You know, we've got issues for sure. The economy for one and rising prices, um, you know, but I think, you know, where we look where the sport will be in the future is something that we're very focused on. Top of the leaderboard is current world champion George Digweed, who's shot a fantastic 116 out of 120, followed by Phil Gray, just one target behind. Ground owner John Bidwell says he doesn't set out to make the targets hard for the top shots. It's all about making the shoot enjoyable for everyone. We know that all the top shooters are going to be up there anyway, and that doesn't matter. Look, people like to break clays even the top shooters. They want to go out there and shoot 120. That's what their aim is. Um, uh, uh, you get the lot. And they might do it, it's possible, but they very rarely do it. And 120 targets with 15 stands, it's a difficult on its own, regardless of the targets, what they are. You've still got to concentrate for 15 stands, and it's not easy. It's a course that's not set up for extreme distance or anything like that. I always try and maintain a, a, a course for speed and angle, and that will catch people out. They don't have to be out there a long way to beat people. You can, you can beat someone just on a, a small target, as, as people have discovered through this shoot again. We haven't put them out extremely long, and you don't need it. And I had a girl came up to me yesterday, and she was jumping up and down with joy. And I said, well, are you straight? And she said, no, I hit two. And she said, but I'm so pleased. And I thought, blimey, she's missed six, but she's really enjoying it, and she's hit two. And that's what it's all about. Billy Bourne has put in a very respectable 105, but he feels he could have done better. Yeah, it's, it's a good little shoot. You know, it's a bit of everything, isn't there? Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, just, didn't, just didn't shoot very well. You can't shoot well all the time. Well, it'd be nice to. Billy's shooting his trusty Maruku MK38. Uh, it's a trap gun, but with multi-choke barrels. I've, sh I've shot Marukus, well, forever, really, since I started. So eight or nine years, they do the, do the job perfectly. My maintenance isn't as good as some people's, um, as a lot of people know, but I've literally never had a single problem. It's still on the original pins, uh, it's never had a spring, it's, it's um, faultless to be honest. I wouldn't change, well not, you know, thinking about maybe a heritage for the next one, I don't know, something a little bit different but still a browning. Billy's not the sort to chop and change his teak chokes to suit the targets. I'll shoot the same chokes at everything, I'll shoot one shot size and one cartridge at absolutely everything. That view is endorsed by Rodrigo Crespo, managing director of another of the shoot sponsors, Ely Hawk. 
You know what they say, if you are really into it, just focus on the shot and focus on the clay. Leave aside, when you're on the stage, you just have to, to, to think about the flow, the movement, you saw the clay, and, and stop thinking about the cartridge, stop thinking about the choke, just be focused and, and do your best, because you have been really practicing, you have really been, uh, you are really ready for it, you have nothing else to worry about. The cut is going to be there and you know that you have got the ability just to smash them, so just go and have fun. So, what cartridges would Rodrigo suggest for shooting an event like the English Open? Oh, by all means, I would rather, I will choose the Superbs. It's a huge cartridge, phenomenal range, 28 uh, rounds, especially for sporting, and also for sure the VIP Federation. So for top shooters, they will also always go for VIP Sporting because they are the most reliable, always been around and, and they are so effective that they will never let you down. Yeah. As the last squads come in, George Digweed and Phil Gray still hold the lead, but there's five shooters tied on 1-1-3 for the remaining four places in the Super Final, and that means a shoot-off. Gerald Hall has shot brilliantly to gain a place in the shoot-off, but she's knocked out, leaving the six finalists to battle it out for the English Open title. George Digweed goes in with a one-target lead over Phil Gray. Most people's money would be on him or Richard Folds to win. Richard can't close that gap though, and George's lead slips away. Meanwhile, Paul Batchelor is quietly creeping up behind them. In the end, it all comes down to Paul's final pair. So George has to be content with third place, with Phil Gray in second. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm over the moon with it. Yeah, I really am. Yeah, it was a bit intense to come from behind and um, George and Phil Gray were two and three in front of me and to catch him up, yeah, it was, yeah, it was really good, yeah. And I knew the last pair I needed to kill that to win it. And it happened. <laughs> yeah. To beat the people who I've beat today, George, Richard, Phil, John Lee, you know, they're, they're the best shots there is. I go all around the world, but never been in like a super final like this. Uh, and to beat them, it's, yeah, massive thing. <laughs>